practice problems to question number 10. Two numbers have a sum of 30 and a product of 209. What is the positive difference between them? Okay, now first we need to find these two numbers so that we can find the positive difference between them or the sum or the product or whatever the question is asking you for. Now when I have um, this, it's a typical question um, to see on the test, you have the sum of the numbers is 30 and the product is 209. We need to guess what these two numbers are. Especially we, we can't use the answers here because the answers here are for the positive difference between them. It's, the answers are not the actual two numbers so you can't test them. So the positive difference between the two numbers um, it could be many different combination of numbers and give you the same difference. So the only way to do this is to try to guess the two numbers. Now to do this in a systematic way what I would do is I first try extremes. So I, I know that the sum is 30. Okay what plus what can equal 30? Let's just try an extreme. It can be 1 and 29, right? So 1 plus 29 is 30. Okay, that's fine. How about the product of 1 and 29? It's 29 only. And I want something with a product of 209. That means I need to have a smaller difference between the two numbers. Now, the smaller the difference between two numbers, the bigger their product is. And the bigger the difference between the two numbers, the smaller their product is. As you can see here, 1 and 29 are very far away from each other, so their product is just 29. However, if you try something like 15 and 15, 15 times 15, 15 plus 15, sorry, gives you the sum of 30 as well. How about the product, 15 times 15? Okay, let's try. Now, this should be one of the numbers that you memorize, but let's just um, go over it this way if you don't know it. 5 times 5 is 25, and 5 times 1 is 5 and 2, 7, and then 5 and 1, so we have 5, 2, 2. 225. Okay, that's close to 209. So we try something a little bit before that, which is 14 times 16, because 14 plus 16 equals 30. I don't know if that's going to work or not. How about 13 and 17? Hmm. Or should it be 12 and 18? Or should it be 11 and 19? Now, I'm not going to try all of those on the test. I need to have some kind of a shortcut. What is it? Look at the ones position in the product. The product you want right here is going to be 209. So look at the ones position in 209. It's a 9. That means that the two numbers multiplied by each other must give me a 9 in the ones position. Now, 1 times 29 is going to give me a 9, but it's too small. It's only 29. So what else could give me 9? 11 and 19, right? 11 plus 19 is 30. And the 1 times the 9 will give me a 9 in the 1's position. So this is a very good candidate. It may be the answer. You're not really sure. You may not um, want to go and, and multiply these two numbers. Well, estimate. 19 is almost 20. 11 is almost 10. 20 times 10 is 200. So that's really close. So we're probably right. Let's make sure. 19 times 10 is 119. 19 times 1 is 19. So the product of 11 and 19 is 119 plus 19, which is 209. So these are my two numbers, 11 and 19. The difference between them is 8. So the answer right here will be C, 8. Okay, now also in practice problems 2, let's do question number 12. Question number 12. What is the largest amount of postage that cannot be made if we have access to an unlimited number of 5 cents and 11 cents stamps. So we have 5s and 11s only, okay? What is the largest amount of postage that cannot be made? Now look at the question really closely. It says the largest amount that cannot be made. So I'm looking for an amount that cannot be made and I want it to be the biggest one possible. Okay, we start with the big answer first because I'm looking for the largest one that cannot be made. So let's say we try 53 cents E and it doesn't work. We can't make 53 cents out of 5 and 11. Then the answer is E right away. Well, what if we can? Then we try D and so on. Okay, let's take a look. You have 5s and 11s. How can you make 53 cents out of 5 cents and 11 cents? Okay, I know there's a 3 here and this 3 will never come by using 5 cents. It will only come by using 11 cents. So I say 3 times 11 cents, stamps, so three stamps it gives me 33 cents. Okay, how many are we? How much are we missing now? 20 cents, right? Because we want 53. We already have 33. What is 20 cents? Oh, that's easy. Four times 
5 cents gives me 20 cents. So 33 plus 20, 53. Okay, so 53 can be made. And we're looking for something that cannot be made. So E is not the answer. Then we try 48. Okay, 48 cents. Now, again, I know the 8 here cannot be made using 5s. However, we can add a 5 to a 3. How do we get 3 from 11? Same way as before. So 3 times 11 cents gives me 33 cents. Now, I need to add 5 to that to make it 48. So how much do I need? 48 minus 13, 33 is 15 cents. How can we get 15 cents? By doing 3 times 5 cents. So 48 also works. Since it works, then it is not the answer. Remember, not the answer because one something that cannot work. Then we try C, 43 cents. Again, the trick is in the 3. The only way to get 3 or the smallest way to get 3 the first way is to do 3 stamps of 11 cents each. So 33 cents. Okay. 43 minus 33 is 10. So we need 2 times 5 cents stamps. 33 plus 10 is 43. So again, C can be made. So we will eliminate C. How about 39 cents? Okay. Now, here's a big number, 9, in the 1's position. We know we can't get it using 5's only. We can get 9 using 11 cents if we use 11 cent stamps, but that will be 99 cents, so that's even bigger than what we want at the end, so that can't work. So the only thing I can think of is to make 39 cents into 5 plus a 4, right? So 5's, multiples of 5, and then add 4 using the 11. However, the first value you get to get a 4 in the 1's position is to multiply the 11 cents by 4. 4 11 cents stamps. You get 44. But you can't add any 5 to it now because if you add just even one 5, you get 49 cents. Whereas I wanted 39 cents. So there's no way to make a 9 without first having 4 11 cents stamps, which is 44. So the, the, the answer in this case will be B because B cannot be made and it is bigger than A. So we don't need to test A. Okay. Same practice problems number 2. Let's do question number 14. Okay, question number 14. Okay, a train traveling 88 feet per second takes 3 seconds to enter a tunnel and another 30 seconds to pass completely through it. What is the length of the train? Okay, whenever you have speed and then you have length and you have time, there's only one relationship we know, which is speed equals distance over time. Okay? Now, the train travels at 88 feet per second. That's the speed. And it takes 3 seconds to enter, then 30 seconds to pass. So my time is not just one number. We need to draw this to make sure that we get it right. So here's my tunnel. Okay? Now, we know that the train takes three seconds to enter a tunnel. What does that mean? If this is the front of the train, the tip of the train, and here's the back of the train, okay? Small train. It takes three seconds to get into the tunnel. So three seconds to become completely inside the tunnel, right? Then it takes another 30 seconds to pass completely through it. So after 30 seconds, the back of the train had just left the tunnel. So 30 seconds from here to here. So to get into the tunnel takes 3 seconds. To pass completely out of the tunnel it takes 30 seconds. Now, the question is, what is the length of the train in feet? And this is a trick, okay? Because the length of the train is actually the distance traveled from the tip of the train to the very back of the train. So the length of the train can be determined from here using the three seconds which it took to get into the tunnel. I don't care how much time it took inside the tunnel because I'm not asking you for that part of the problem. So you can forget about the 30 seconds altogether. So now, what is my speed? 88 feet per second. What is the distance that is the length of the train that I'm looking for? That's the distance it traveled in three seconds, the length of it. Over the time, which is 3 seconds, the time it took to get in completely inside the tunnel, meaning the time it took from when its tip was at, at the beginning of the tunnel till when its back was at the beginning of the tunnel, which is its length. So the length equals 88 times 3. 
88 times 3. So length equals 88 times 3. Now, 80 times 3 is 240. 8 times 3 is 24. So it's 240 times 24. That's 264. 264. So the answer would be B. Okay, practice problems 2, question number 15, the last question in the sheet. How many different four-digit numbers can be made using the digits 1, 1, 9, and 9? Okay, we just need to list them. Let's start with the smallest numbers first. So I'll start with 1, okay, and then 1, and then 9, and then 9. Same order I got here. I'm going from smallest to greatest. Now, after 1 and 1, you have two numbers, 9 and 9. The second number would be to flip the last two, but they're both 9s, so you're still going to get 1, 1, 9, 9. So there's nothing else I can do with 1 and 1. So I can try 1 and then 9. Then smallest thing would be 1 and 9. So 1, 9, 1, 9. Again, 1, 9, and then flip them. So 1, 9, 9, 1. Okay. Is there anything else I can do starting with 1? No, because I already used the 1 after. I used 9s after twice. I can't do anything else. So we start with 9 this time. Okay, 9, small numbers. 1, 1, 9. 9 and 1, and then flip the 1 and 9, so it becomes 9, 1. Can you do anything else with 9, 1? No, so the next thing I can try is to do 9, 9. After that, you have 1 and 1. If you flip the two ones, they will still give you two ones. So it's nine nine one one. So basically, these are the numbers, the different numbers that we can get using one one nine and nine. One two three four five six. So only six numbers work. Okay. Now there is a, a formula for this. Okay, um, but it is um, complicated, and uh, you can use distinct and indistinct numbers and stuff like that. So I really don't uh, prefer to use that. We, I haven't seen anything that requires um, such a, a formula on the test. However, just so you know it, um, it basically says that you need to find um, n factorial over a factorial. What is n factorial? n factorial would be the number of digits you're going to have, four digits. So in this case, it's going to be four. And a right here is the number of indistinct numbers. So here, 1, 1, 9, and 9. How many numbers are indistinct, are not distinct? The 1 and the 1, so that's two numbers, and the 9 and the 9. So two numbers and two numbers are not distinct. Okay. So we can rewrite this as, instead of n factorial, it would be 4 factorial. What are the 4? 1, 2, 3, and 4, the 4 digits that we have. Over. A factorial is the number of indistinct numbers. 1 and 1 are two indistinct numbers. They're two numbers that are not distinct, are not different. Okay, They're two numbers that are the same, so over 2 factorial. But we also have 9 and 9, they're indistinct numbers, so times another 2 factorial. The first 2 for the 1s, the second 2 for the 9s. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 2 factorial is 2 times 1 times the other 2 factorial is 2 times 1. Now simplify. The 2 and the 2 go away with the 4. So you're left with 3 times 2 on top, giving you 6. So you have 6 numbers only. Answer is A again.